All right, this video is on combinations and we'll motivate this with problems. So suppose that out of three people, we want to select a committee of two people. How many ways can this be done? And note that order here does not matter. So what I wanna do is I wanna label people. I wanna label people A, B, and C. So we're selecting committees of two people. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create all possible permutations of this, and then we're gonna eliminate the ones that are similar. So we could choose a B, we could choose a C, we could choose a B, C, we could also choose B, A, we could choose C, A, and we could choose C, B. So there's six possible permutations of this. But if we note something, we can see that these two are the same, these two are the same, and these two are the same. So the real answer that we want is three. So how we can figure this out is we can ask ourselves, okay, we have three factorial possible permutations. So this is the number of permutations. Now, in each permutation, there's two different ways that we can order it. So we can divide this by two factorial. So we can consider this uh, the number of orderings per permutation. And what we're going to get is 3 times 2 times 1, or 2 times 1, which just gets us 3 as our result. So when we think about commu uh, combinations, it's kind of like taking permutations, but we need to consider that the order doesn't matter. So we need to consider how many of those permutations are the same in each group and divide by that total number. So we do get a formula for this. This is the n choose k. So this right here is read as n choose k. So in the problem that we were just doing, we had three people and we were choosing two of them. So we would have written this as three choose two. Now, how this works is we take n factorial. So this is going to be the number of total people or our n here. And what we're only do what we're doing here is we're taking a subset of them. So we had three total. But in this case of n minus k factorial, this is going to be the number picked. So we had three people, but we were only going to pick two of them. So this is where we get our n minus k. And this k factorial here is going to be the number of orderings in permutation. Uh, and this is going to allow us to get rid of the ordering. So you'll notice this formula from the previous video, the n factorial over n minus k factorial being choosing k from a list of n. And then the k factorial is getting rid of those, uh, those, those different orderings that mean the same thing. So if we were to write this formula out, we'd get something very similar. We'd get three factorial on the top. Uh, we're choosing two, so we're gonna get two factorial on the bottom, and then we're choosing two from the list. So we're gonna get three minus two factorial here. This will simplify to three factorial over two factorial times one factorial. One factorial is just one. Relevant three factorial over two factorial, which gives us three. So this breaks down the formula a little bit, taking in the fact that we don't care about order and also the fact that we're choosing two from a list of a greater number of things. So let's see this in action with another problem. So suppose a city has 25 buses and eight of them have defects. So how many ways could we select a sample of, let's say, uh, so of five of 25 buses for inspection. So there's 25 buses total. I want to select a sample of five of them. So because the order doesn't matter here, 
This is just the same thing as saying, I want to choose out of 25, I want to pick five of those. So we could write out the equation for this. This will be 25 factorial over five factorial times 25 minus five factorial. This gives us 25 factorial over five factorial, 20 factorial. If we simplify this a little bit, um, basically what we're going to get is, well, 25 times 24 times 23 times 22 times 21. At this point, the 20 factorials will cancel out. And then we'll be left with five times four times three times two times one at the bottom. And if we put this into a calculator, we're gonna get something like 53,130. That is memorized, <laughs> that is not computation in my head. Don't worry. So in B, how many ways can a sample of five buses have exactly four defects? So this problem's a little bit more interesting. And here's the ideology behind figuring this out. So eight have defects. And what we wanna do is we wanna choose four of those. 17 don't have defects. And what we wanna do is we wanna choose one of those. Now these are independent events, so we're gonna end up multiplying these together. So how we can do this is we can say this is eight choose four, and we can multiply this by 17 choose one. And if we do the math for this, this should give us 1,190, if I recall correctly. I recommend putting it into a calculator, doing the algebra, and checking that yourself. So, if a sample of five buses is chosen at random, what is the probability that exactly four have defects? Well, what this is going to be is this is going to be the probability of our event which was what we did in B, divided by the probability of our sample space. So 25 choosing five buses. So what we're gonna get is eight choose four times 17 choose one over 25 choose five. So we know these numbers. There's 1,190 ways to choose four buses that have defects out of a sample of five. And there's 53,130 ways in order to choose five buses from a sample of 25. And eyeballing it, I don't remember the exact number, so I'll just give a rough estimate here. This looks to be uh, 0.02, uh, a little bit ahead there, which is about a 2% probability of that happening. So if you put that into a calculator, uh, maybe you'll get closer to 2.5%, but it should be about there. So this is just an intro to these problems. We'll do another video where we just do a lot more of these problems, including card counting. Uh, but for this, I think this is a nice introduction to how this works, some good motivation for how the formula comes about. And hopefully you're able to tackle some problems at this point involving combinations.